morning. Art Hostage here and we're going to do another episode. Now today's episode I'm going to focus on the recent um, theft of the two million dollar solid gold 18 carat tabernacle stolen uh, from a church in Brooklyn last week. Okay. But first of all, right, I want to make a comparison, right, to give you a little bit of history, okay, on when things that are solid gold have been stolen. Okay. On September the 14th, 2019, news broke, right, that, um, that a solid gold toilet by uh, called America by the um, artist... Uh, Maurizio Catalan, okay, was stolen from Blenheim Palace. It was solid gold, weighing over 120 kilos, and its scrap meltdown value at the time was just under $5 million. Okay. Right, so let me just read you the timeline. News broke that thieves had stolen the golden toilet from Blenheim Palace after breaking in around 5 a.m., leaving behind significant damage and flooding. The palace closed its doors to visitors for the day and a police cordon was put around the stately home. Bosses at the palace made a statement about the extraordinary events and said it was worth the risk. The toilet, an 18-carat art installation by Maurizio Catalan, was plumbed in and ready for use. Visitors had even been sitting on the Golden Loo for three minutes at a time. Police said it had up security in the area and pledged to make every effort to find the missing gold toilet. Talk about trying to bolt the door when the ulcers bolted. On September the 16th, a man was released on bail after police get more time to question him. September the 17th, pictures of the damage released. September the 20th, thieves could have struck days earlier too. Priceless heirlooms stolen from another stately home in Gloucestershire, just 30 miles away. September the 27th, gold toilet still not found, but police arrest a 36-year-old man in connection with the Dawn Heist. Danny McLaughlin, right? October the 2nd. CCTV from the breaking are released in a fresh bid to track down the £5 million gold, golden toilet. Pictures show one of the two stolen cars used with a fake number plate on. Police say they think five people broke into the palace that night, plus all the details revealed. On October the 3rd, nearly a month later, they put up, right, a £100,000 reward up for grabs in return for the golden toilet stolen. And you've got to remember, right, if you cut it up and put it in the melting pot, it's worth $5 million, right? <laughs> These people, right, who do they think they're fucking dealing with? Baggage handlers, right? They're offering a £100,000, what, well, $120,000 reward for a gold toilet, okay, which melts down to five million dollars. What chance do you think they got? October the 16th, two men and a woman, all in their 30s from Oxford, arrested on suspicion of conspiracy to commit a burglary. On October the 18th, three people arrested, now released under investigation nearly a month from the breaking. The toilet is not found. November the 14th, fresh arrest made by police in hunt for Catalan's um, gold toilet stolen. Six people all arrested in connection with morning heist and handling stolen goods released under investigation. Toilet still not found. June the 24th, the year, right the next year, police officers investigating the theft of the golden toilet have arrested another man. All the arrests until now, a 35-year-old man from London arrested on suspicion of handling stolen goods, a 66-year-old man from Evesham arrested on suspicion of burglary, that is Ricky Johnson, a 35-year-old man from Cheltenham arrested on suspicion of conspiracy to burgle, a 34-year-old man, 30, a 35-year-old man, a 36-year-old woman, all from Oxford, 
a 44-year-old man from Kent arrested on suspicion of burglary, right? Okay. And then we fast forward, right? And I can honestly tell you what happened. Shortly after the theft of the gold toilet, right? I got to a, a, um, a lead. So I spoke to Philip Austin, who was the loss adjuster on the case. And I said, how much would be available? He said, £100,000. I said, you do know that it scraps to about $5 million, don't you? He said, yes, but that's all it is. I said, yeah, but don't um, art detectives normally get 20% plus VAT of the claim? He said, yes, you're right. I said, well, what about then I'm an art detective. Can I get that? He went, no. I said, so oh, what is that there? He went, 100000 I went, yeah, okay. I said, well, best of luck with it and see you later. I put the phone down. About a week later, right, contacted again, Philip Austin. Have you heard anything about the toilet? I went, yeah. I said, well, as soon as you told me, as soon as you told me that it was a hundred thousand pound for a five million dollar melted down toilet, right? I just told the truth. I said, and all you could hear was shh, 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 shh. hacksaw sawing it up into bits, right? And it's in the pot. So there was five of them, did it? You got five million dollars for the scrap gold of the toilet, million dollars each, okay? Yeah, it could have been recovered if the reward had been something like a million dollars or two million dollars. They'd have saved money and they'd have got it back. But no, they just wanted to offer a few crumbs from the monarch's table. Yes, yeah, there's, a, there's a five million dollar solid gold toilet stolen that you can put in the pot for five million. But if you recover it, and arrests and all that, you get 120,000. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah, go fuck yourself. Right, so that's a, that's the gold toilet in 2019. Right, it's never been recovered because it went in the pot. And the Johnson gang who stole it, okay, what they did to go to the police, they bought an, um, an ordinary toilet and they painted it gold and they put it outside their caravan site to go to the police. Now, let's move forward, okay, to last week. Okay, now here's the story in The Guardian. $2 million tabernacle stolen from New York City Catholic Church, police say. Brooklyn Diocese calls it a crime of disrespect and hate and says, the, and says gold relic is irreplaceable for its historic and artistic value. Put a pin in that, okay? It's irreplaceable. Police say someone has broken into the altar at a New York City church, stole a $2 million gold relic and removed the head from a statue of an angel. The incident happened between 6.30pm last Thursday and 4pm on Saturday, the police said. The police said on Monday at, at St. August, Augustine's Roman Catholic Church, known as Notre Dame of Brooklyn's Park Slope neighbourhood. The church was closed for construction at a time, where there's a clue. Camera recordings from the church security system were also stolen, the church pastor said. The Diocese of Brooklyn called it a brazen crime of disrespect and hate. The diocese said the thief or thieves cut through a metal protective casing, apparently with a specialist saw, and made off with a tabernacle dating to the church's opening in the 1890s. The tabernacle, a box containing Holy Communion items, was made of 18 karat gold, the same as the gold toilet, and decorated with jewels, police and the diocese said, and is valued at $2 million. Well, they haven't released how much it weighs because it's easy to work out how much it's worth in the melting pot by the ounce. Okay. Anyway, the diocese said it was irreplaceable because of its historic and artistic value. According to a guidebook posted on the church's website, the tabernacle was built in 1895 and restored in 1952 and 2000. It's described as a masterpiece and one of the most expensive tabernacles in the country, guarded by its own security system. 
which involves an electronically operated burglar proof safe and one inch thick steel plates that completely enclose the tabernacle. Angel statues flanking the tabernacle were decapitated and destroyed. The diocese said a, um, a safe in the sacristy where priests prepare for mass was also cut open but nothing was inside. Holy Eucharist bread, con bread consecrated as the body of Christ was taken from the tabernacle and thrown on the altar. Frank Tomino, the pastor um, of St. Augustine, said in a statement issued by the diocese that the incident was devastating and added, to know that a burglar entered the most sacred space of our beautiful church and took great pains to cut into a security system is a heinous act of disrespect, Tomino said. Right, well... So it's got all the protective thing, right? And a one inch steel casing around it, right? Well, there's building work going on. Okay. And then someone breaks in and expertly cuts it out of the um, protective steel casing, gets away with it. Well, if they can cut the casing, they can certainly cut the tabernacle up into bits, and I know it's sacrilege, and I know it's all that, right, well, you've got to forget about that, because these people are thieves, now, in all these cases, right, what you need to do is immediately, you offer a reward for more than the scrap meltdown value, and what that does is it buys you time, because if you, right, offer an absurd, absurdly low reward like they did on the gold toilet of a hundred and twenty thousand US dollars, a hundred thousand pounds, when the thing melts in the pot for five million dollars plus. Okay, what do you think's gonna happen? Well I'll tell you what happened. They sawed it up and they put it in the pot. So now my warning would be to the Brooklyn Diocese and the NYPD, if you're gonna offer a reward Make sure it's for more than what the scrap value of the tabernacle is, or do not offer any reward whatsoever. Because all you're doing um, by offering some absurd amount, like $100,000, $200,000, if the thing goes in the pot for a million, million and a half, two million dollars, well, no one in their right mind is going to even attempt to try and claim the reward. And the amount of hoops you have to go through to collect a reward means that most times, nine out of ten times, rewards never get paid. And then the person who's given the information is threatened and said, listen, you start complaining you didn't get paid the reward, we'll expose you as being the informant. Okay? And this is just a little one. It's just a warning. But I would imagine, right, if they know this is solid gold, right, and if they can um, um, do some despicable act like this to steal it, and um, then they've obviously got, they don't care about um, any kind of religious overtones, right? So I, might, I would imagine it's already been cut up into bits. And what they're going to do is they're just going to filter it into the um, gold market. Go and see, you know, some scrap dealers they know. And they just put it in and they melt it down and it'll all be gone. Might go into um, 18 karat gold. Well, it's not 22 karat gold. So it might not appeal to the um, Asian market for wedding bands and wedding jewellery. But 18 karat gold, okay, will go, you know, Las Vegas, any places with big jewellery stores. But it'll just be melted down. And let's say they come out with some kind of huge reward. Now they're saying, right, it's, it's um, irreplaceable because of its historic and artistic value. Well, if that's the case, why not come out immediately with a $1 million reward if it's recovered intact? $1 million. Now that would tempt people, wouldn't it? But no, right, this has happened... Right, d discovered last Saturday, we're now Tuesday. We're coming up for a week, right? And there's been no mention of any reward. So if there's, if anyone who's got this is sitting there thinking, I wonder how much reward they're going to offer, or should we just cut it up and put it in the melting pot? 
well, it just made it, you know, any, you know, if they're criminals, you know, that's going to be cut up into lots of different pieces, and then and then uh, they're stash it in different places. So if ever any one bit gets discovered, they've still got all the rest of it. And I know these holier than now people are going to start playing on the religious things. Well, you can't do that in this, these situations. You have to be brutal, as brutal as the thieves, and you say immediately that this is um, irreplaceable because of its historical and artistic value. It's worth $2 million, but, you know, and if it scraps to, say, a $1 million, we're going to get make an, a reward of $1.5 million. Immediately you do that. Now, listen, um, the NYPD are quite competent, okay? And so they'll put a lot of resources into this. And they may very well recover it intact, and it'll be a wonderful thing they, um, um, if they do. But the odds are, unless they get a lead or they've got a lead, okay, they probably won't recover it. And then it's gone forever. It'll just be melted down and put in the pot. And the jewels will be popped out, and then they'll just be sold. But as I say... When these things happen, right, yes, I understand when it's sort of like um, um, a work of art worth millions, right, and you can't break it up or do anything like that with it, a painting or something, but this is something where the actual value in the criminal world and to monetize it, all you've got to do is to saw it up into bits and then just put it in the melting pot. So to nip that in the bud and to buy yourself some time, my advice would be, in this instance, on the $2 million tabernacle, right, come out immediately, right, with a $1 million reward. Or, whatever it goes in the pot, whatever it scraps to, offer the reward should be higher than that, and they should publicise that. Now, if you put it in the pot, you're going to get X amount, a $1 million, but if you hand it back, or if someone can recover it, there's one and a half million dollars reward. And that will make them think twice. But I suppose they've got their own ways of working. But I'm only going on history when something um, made of solid gold is stolen. I mean, the gold toilet, right? Well, it didn't have no significance other than the fact it had just been created as, you know, a solid gold toilet. So going in the melting pot didn't really matter. You could make another one tomorrow. But with this tabernacle, you can't do that, right? It's over 100 years old. 127 years old. So I think perhaps it might have been a big, a big mistake by not offering a huge reward immediately, right? Just to slow everything down. Unless, of course, they've got a lead and they know who it is, someone to do with the builders, right, or the construction workers, right, because the way it was stolen, right, you would assume that the people would have to know how to do that. Well, you know, construction workers would know, or the construction workers have passed it on to someone who's a specialist in crime, organised crime, and they've stolen it. Now, they may very well catch the people that did it, Okay, I'm sure that they've got leads, and I'm sure that they would, might be able to build a case against the people, but it doesn't get it back. And yes, you could make exemplary um, jail sentences out of this, but it still, at the end of the day, does not get the tabernacle back. And I'm sure that the, um, the number one priority was getting it back intact, or is getting it back intact. Well, they're doing themselves no favours by not offering any reward or not even mentioning it. Because it will come out that actually how much does it weigh or how much 18 karat gold is contained within this tabernacle. Because on the gold toilet, it came out, it weighed 100 and, was it 113 or 119 kilos. So you just go on any scrap gold site and work it out. How much is gold a kilo? And then you times it by how many kilos of gold. And it's the same with this tabernacle. Once the weight of it is, you know, is is out there, you just times it by um, 
say, I don't know how much it might um, it might weigh, I don't know, um, just say 100 kilos, well, 100 times whatever a kilo of gold is, 18 carat. And then that's the value, the scrap value, that's the underworld value. But I mean, it's a huge thing, right? It might weigh, well, it might, I, I, I don't know how much it would weigh. If it really is that solid gold, right, it certainly looks a lot bigger than the gold toilet. This thing could scrap, right, this thing could scrap to, I don't know, millions. If it's hundreds of kilos. Right, you know, I'm just going to go and have a look now, right, the latest price today, right, on the London gold market, okay, let's go and have a look here, right, this morning. Right, market rates. Here we go, right? 18 carat gold is 34 pound a gram. Right, yeah, let's go with um, gold bullion. Right, fine gold bars. Well, they're up, no, they're not 18 carat, are they? So that you're not going to be able to do that. Fine gold bars, silver bar. No, let, let me work this out. London fixes, right? Here are. No, where is it? Market rates, that's the one I want to look at, right? Yeah. So now £34.57, right, a gram. So there's, what, 31 grams to an ounce. Okay, well, let's, let's get the calculator out, you know, just, just for a little bit of um, fun. Right, here we go. Online calculator. Right, so it's what is it? Thirty-four pounds point caught fifty seven times thirty one equals right, that's a thousand pounds, so that's like twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars an ounce. Right, then times twenty eight. Right, equals £30,000, £45,000 a kilo. So, the $2 million solid 18 karat gold tabernacle, right, is worth $45,000 per kilo. So, if it's 100 kilos, it's worth $4.5 million. 200 kilos, it's worth $9 million. Wow, oh, fuck it. I mean, that's a huge amount, isn't it? So this $2 million, right? Well, $2 million, 4, 10, 20. Right, well, $2 million would add up to about 40 kilos. Well, it looks like it's, it's much heavier than 40 kilos. So we don't really know what it's worth. But I'll tell you what it's worth. is, is It's worth 45,000 US dollars per kilo for 18 karat gold. And then when you find out the weight, you'll be able to work out exactly what it's worth. We haven't come out with no reward, no nothing. So what incentive? Yes, and as I say, you know, Godspeed and they may, um, they may recover it intact. But they're certainly taking a chance. And those that have stolen it, right, well, their intention, if, if they know it's solid gold, okay, would be, well, okay, when, once we sell it, we're going to take it and we must cut it up straight away and, and put it in different places. If they do recover it, like within a week, two, three weeks, and it's still intact, well, then the people who stole it deserve to be arrested. If you look at it from a criminal point of view, because it's solid gold, so what you would do is, once it's stolen, you just saw it up into pieces. And then you dot them all over the place, and then you slowly sell them. I'm not saying they should do that. I'm saying that is what a criminal would do. So anyway, right, this is um, our hostage episode. Hang on, what episode is this? Do you know, I've lost with all the episodes now. This will be episode 133. 
The gold tabernacle stolen from Brooklyn. Will it be a repeat of the gold toilet stolen from Blenheim Palace? And in the pot it went. And millions of dollars went into the pockets of criminals. Normally it's one bit, once bitten, twice shy. Or is it going to be twice bitten? Right, stay tuned, because I'm sure there will be developments on the solid gold 18-carat tabernacle. Art Hostage, signing off.